a good morning to you, a good afternoon to you, wherever you're watching us from. My name is Irene Jahenda, and I'll be the moderator for the lesson discussion today. And we are coming to you live from the New Life SDA Church here at Fifth Ngong Avenue, uh, Karibuni Sana. And uh, before we can just um, uh, continue, I'd like uh, just to have a brief introduction of the of the panelists that we have today, and I'd just like um, my brothers and sisters just to introduce themselves before we proceed. Uh, over to you, my sister, then uh, Elder. Good morning, brethren. We want to thank God for the wonderful opportunity he has given us once again to come to thy throne, uh, to his throne of grace, to worship him. My name is Elder Jared Manyara, a member of this church. Thank you very much. Good morning, saints. My name is Reni Songuka, a member of this church. Thank you so much. Um, I will request my sister, uh, Mercy, just to pray for us before we can start. And a loving Father, thank you for yet another week that we have come to study at your feet, O oh Lord. We pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, that that which we are going to share, Lord, will be from you, but it will touch us before it touches anybody else. Speak to us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, to our viewers, I uh, would just like to uh, take us through, it's been a, a journey uh, in this particular quarter where we've been discussing managing for the master until he comes and uh, we've gone through various lessons and particularly for today we are going to discuss uh, laying up treasure in heaven. Um, the Bible just encouraging us as Christians and believers to be able to lay up our treasures in heaven. And I want to just read for us uh, the main text uh, for this particular lesson. And uh, it comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36. And it says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And uh, we are just able to see that um, Jesus gave us the world's best investment strategy. And uh, when he said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust will destroy and where thieves will break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust or rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal and um from this uh we're just able to understand that uh we are encouraged as believers uh through through the text uh through our reading and understanding that it is very important and critical for us to to focus on laying our treasures in heaven rather here on earth and I would just like to invite my sister Marcy uh, probably just to share on the same in terms of uh, as we are looking at uh, diving into this particular context uh, what 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 is your expectation what is your understanding of this okay thank you Irene and uh, as I, I just realized I had always read that verse you know the the, the verse from Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 that in verse 19 sorry that do not lay up your treasures on earth but, you know, lay, lay up your treasures in heaven. And I, I've always wondered, how does that practically, you know, what does that practically mean? And I thank God for this lesson because as a result, looking at the different, um, uh, you know, servants of God that we have looked at this week, it has opened up my mind to understand better what it is, the kind of sacrifices that God has called upon us to make on this earth as, as a way of investing for heaven. I looked at this week and one of the things that, that really resonated with me is delayed gratification. You know, we, we, we normally tell our children, you know what, uh, wait, you know, um, don't do it now, you're gonna, it will get better when, when you do it later if you wait. But um, this, this week has opened up my mind to the understanding that delayed gratification sometimes requires that we sacrifice here for a better future and that is what God is looking God is telling us this morning in terms of looking out to the kingdom of God which right now we cannot see but we have by faith have envisioned it wow that's 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 wonderful um 
I lack the point of uh, delayed gratification. And uh, just before we are able just to get and tap into it directly, um, Elda, Opere, Elda Manyara, sorry, um, we are just um, going to also look at various characters in the Bible uh, who are able to actually set an example for us of what it means by actually laying our treasures in heaven, rather here on earth, and uh, also having uh, examples who who did not actually do that and we are able to also vision and uh, see that the consequences that actually came with it and uh, we'll just like to uh, bring us uh, of course to the the Sunday part whereby we are learning about um, uh, this particular example and the great uh, character in the Bible uh, we have Noah who's uh, coming in in terms of uh, being able to understand and listen to God even when he's receiving mockery all around and uh, being able to, to, to see um, this is what God wants and uh, following and obeying. And um, probably I would like uh, for you to just share with us um, what, what does it mean? I mean, uh, in a day like today when you when you listen to God and uh, uh, you start saying we are building an ark all of a sudden we are building an ark and we want to stay there and uh, we are waiting on God I don't know how this will be taken up probably you can just uh, share with us within that light uh, as we move to Sunday I, I just want to comment briefly on the introduction <clears throat> what's a treasure a treasure is something that we value Something that we're willing to die to protect. So what is that that we're willing to die for protecting? As Christians, it is eternal life. So where are we investing? Are we investing on these things that I just ended? You see, like, here on earth you can acquire as, many, as much as you can. But the day you die... Everything remains above. You are the only one who goes down. Eh? <laughs> Below the surface. The rest remains what? Above the surface. Uh, Paul, echoing the words of Jesus in Colossians chapter 3. Uh, I want to read verse 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not things on the earth. And that is why uh, from the memory text you realize Jesus is asking a question. Yeah? For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? In fact, Jesus is trying to tell us directly that there is nothing that you can give in exchange for your soul. You have to focus on things above. And that's why now <clears throat> you see these biblical characters that we are studying, the, we have been studying this week. They gave up the things of this earth and focused on what uh, is in heaven. Except one character who focused on what <laughs> was on earth. Now we find Noah. The title is very interesting Noah found grace. That means that Noah was looking for it. You cannot find what you are not looking for. Yeah? And how did Noah find grace? If you look at the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verses 8, <clears throat> that's where that title is taken from. But Noah found grace in the eyes of of the Lord. <laughs> now the statement is complete. The title is Noah found grace. But now the, the verse is telling us, but Noah found grace in the eyes 
of the Lord. It is her mercy. You are safe if you find grace in the eyes of the Lord. <clears throat> and what is this that made Noah find grace? If you look at verse 9, the Bible is telling us, there, these are the generations of Noah. You know, when you hear this statement, these are the generations, what are you expecting? Noah beget. Yeah. Noah begat so and so, like that. Now, look at the three things Noah begat before we are told about the children. Number one, Noah was a just man. <laughs> yeah. Number two, he was perfect in his generations. Yeah. Number three, he walked with God. Now we can see the reason why Noah finds grace. He did not value what is on earth. Number one, <clears throat> he made sure that he was just. Number two, he strove for perfection. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, 48, that be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is what? Perfect. And this is what Noah did. And then, you know, we cannot achieve this unless we walk with God. And how do we walk with God? We must make sure he is close to us, listening to his voice all the time. Right now, we may not have the privilege the patriarchs had, where God used to talk with them directly. But we have his word, the Bible. And we must be listening to this word. And it will enable us to walk with him. And by doing so, we will be able to find grace. And interestingly, when Noah was doing all this, there were skeptics. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> telling people that something will happen which has never happened. That was the era of Noah's time before, Noah, uh, before the flood. They just felt like it has never rained. Everything is, is in its own course. The banks have never overflown. Now, what is this man saying? And now, in the last days, we have a problem. And the problem we have is doubting if it ever happened. So may God help us to find grace the way Noah found grace. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Elder Manyaga. And uh, just picking it up from the point where you, you are highlighting to us how um, Noah was able to actually um, tell uh, the people around him that it's going to flood. Um, it's going to rain. And the people are wondering, is, is this even true? This has never happened. And you find that Noah was really um, taking his time, resources, because what was happening at this particular point, um, the ark was not built in one day. Mm -hmm. It took like um, 120. 120 years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, people are still not believing and they are just uh, laughing at uh, Noah. And I just want to ask uh, my sister Renise, um, I believe during these particular times, um, when, when God speaks to you something, sometimes it's not uh, very clear in terms of what the end result is going to look like. And uh, when you share it uh, with, the, with the people around you, uh, they will not understand what, what you're actually saying. Just as Noah was uh, shared with uh, this particular message and people were laughing and not uh, um, getting uh, what he's trying to say. And uh, probably you can just highlight to us in terms of uh, um, uh, obedience to God, even when, when, when you do not understand and what it means to make that major life change as you are making um, that decision to obey the voice of God, just as Noah did. Obedience is critical in our Christian walk, and as we are told that obedience is better than sacrifice. And we just go back to the introduction, which was telling us about laying up treasures in heaven. And as Elder Manyara explained, he told us that it's something you're willing to die for. And as believers of Christ, we are told that the Lord will come like a thief, and each and everything will burn. 
So that means this many things we are struggling for in this world, if your, heart, your treasure is where your heart is and you believe in the word of God and you hear his voice, then when the Lord calls you to sacrifice or do things which are extraordinary, then you will be able to hear the voice of God. And in the world that we are living in today, just like in the time of Noah, we've become so bright and so educated that when somebody tells you something, you say, what does science say? What does common say say? And they tell you, be practical. This religious thing, you are taking it so far. And it is the same thing that Noah had also faced. But one thing we have to know as Christians is, me and you, do we know the voice of God? Where is our treasure? Because where our treasure is, is where our heart will also be. And we also realize from what Noah did is that there is something called delayed gratification and believing in what God said. Because Noah spent 120 years building the ark. He took his resources, he took his time, yeah, he risked his relationships. Because I believe for Noah to have resources to build the ark, that means he was wealthy. And so his business partners would look like him and saying, this guy is making a bad decision. What do you mean you are building an ark that is going to, there are going to be a flood? And they'll look at him and think, no, I think Noah, you are losing it. And it is the same thing with us. When the Lord calls us, it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Because when we have obedience, that is when we'll take the step of faith. And it is, we are told that it is impossible to please God without faith. Wow. Um, that's really wonderful and uh, so many things coming out from there in terms of taking the step of faith and uh, believing in the voice uh, of God and actually recognizing is this the voice of God and uh, being able to discern through that and I would like to move us to another character who was able to listen to actually the voice of God and uh, this particular character and example is actually considered a father of many nations a father of the faithful I mean um, we, 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 we sing the song, Father Abraham had many sons, and uh, we, we are taken through uh, the text, and we are able to understand that Abraham was a very uh, good friend of God, and uh, they could speak with God. And um, for Abraham, it started when the Lord actually called him and asked him, Abraham, at that point he was actually Abraham. <laughs> Abraham, I need you to leave your homeland. I need you to move to a land that I'm going to show you. At this point, Abraham, Abraham doesn't even know where he's going. What does it mean you want me to leave my people, my friends, my home, my family, and everything? And I believe this has, must have been very difficult for Abraham, but he made the step and he obeyed God. And... Um, I don't know, uh, to my sister Marcy, uh, I don't know what it means because uh, when, the, when, the, when the Lord speaks and we are understanding that, sometimes it's not very clear in terms of the end result. And um, I don't know, according to you, would you, would you, when the Lord says, Marcy, I need you to leave, leave home, I need you to, to, to go to a, another place that I'm not telling you where, but you need to go to another place. How, how will you take this? How will you see it? And even just coming into context with Abraham before he was moved to Abraham, uh, what, what do we see when, it, when we are talking about Abraham, the father of the faithful? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Irene. Yes, Abraham, Abraham, the father of the faithful. It's amazing. You know, like I imagine that by the time God is calling you, you know, I see a man who God is calling. And uh, I would, I, I tend to believe, okay, in terms of the genealogy, uh, Abraham comes from, you know, from, uh, from Shem, you know, in terms of when they come out of the ark, now that we're talking about, um, of the children of Noah, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's down uh, from the lineage of Shem. And so probably, yes, his father was a faithful, I mean, like uh, his forefather in, the, in this case had, take, had carried the word of God. And so while Terah, who is Abraham's father, was actually an idol, I, idolater. I, I mean, I, <laughs> you idolater. know, he, he, he worshipped idols. Eh? 
But interestingly, his son gets to hear the voice of God, meaning somewhere along in all this, even as idolatry is, is, is weaving in among the people of God, somehow the word of God still remains. You know, mm. and that's, you know, as I look at Abraham, that's the, that's the hope we have in knowing that it is only in, uh, it's only in imagination that evil will, will succeed. Because somehow God ensures that his word, there, there's a carrier of the truth that continues the lineage of truth eh? and so abraham is that one and you can imagine when god calls him and he says i want you to live you know actually the bible says in genesis chapter 12 that now the lord has, has said to abraham get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land i will show you can you imagine so somebody is actually coming to tell me i need you to leave kenya i need you to leave your family and i need you to leave you your people to a place where i will show you that's not easy let's tell the truth that's not easy and even for him to come and convince his wife and say i've heard the voice of the lord and prophet sarah is looking at him and saying really you have heard the voice of the lord telling us to move and leave everything we have and you can also imagine the chances are that abraham had possessions yeah so he did have possessions in this place where he's living but but faith is knowing I have heard this voice. I do not know where I'm going, but I shall follow this voice. That is faith. And even as you can see, when he leaves, his father chooses to come with him. How interesting is that? That Terah actually follows his son and, 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 you know, and his nephew as well. Eh? So they choose to actually come with him, which anyway is a good decision. But we will see later how they sort of derail him when they get to a place where they, they are not quite moving. Because they sort of derail him until Terah dies. Then only does, he, does God call Abraham again to say, you need to move. I had called to a destination and you didn't reach. You somehow stopped and, and, and slowed down. Eh? But as we talk about um, laying up our treasure, I look at Abraham, a man who says, this, as Nernis has said, these are things that are here and they will end. So he's choosing to believe in this voice that he doesn't know. A voice that has promised him to be a father of nations and he doesn't even have children. I don't know what faith is if that's not faith. Eh? Like a man of God who looks and he says, and we are told in the lesson that most of us, you know, most of us would not be eager to leave our homeland and our friends, our family members. But Abraham did so. Abraham was satisfied to, to be where God wanted him to be. You know, I'm so challenged. Do I, want, do I desire to be where God wants me to be? And sometimes where God wants me to be is a place of hardship. Somewhere, uh, sometimes where God wants me to be is at a place of loneliness, you know. It's at a place of, of poverty, you know, where God wants me to be. But do I desire, do I desire that I will, where God is, is best for me. Because with God, I know I'm safe. So like that song we say, that anywhere with Jesus, I can safely go. You know, because anywhere with Jesus, I am safe. I wonder if I have that faith myself that brings me to that place where I can, I can go. But also later we also see Abraham who is called to sacrifice his only son. God gives him a promise and gives him a son. And now suddenly God, this same God calls him and tells him, I want you to go and sacrifice for me your child. God can be hard. Eh? Sometimes God can be hard to understand. Very difficult. But if we could only have faith, then we know this God who called us, he is faithful. And where he's leading us, his biddings, uh, Mrs. White's book says that his biddings are his enablings. Where he leads, he will provide. So may we have that faith to trust that this God will provide. Even when he's calling us to sacrifice from this life, then he shall provide. Amen. Amen. And um, loving how we are getting into the aspect of uh, provision and um, obedience. I mean, we cannot underrate the level of obedience that Abraham had. And it's such a great, in a manner that is very impactful, it, it, you are wowed. Um, I don't know for you, Elder Manyara, how it would mean for you to leave your country, leave your home, leave everything you have and follow that uh, voice of the Lord that he's speaking to you and you are trusting him in terms of uh, leading your way, in terms of even provision and how will you encourage members just when it comes to making that life-changing decision because I believe um, leaving your, your home it's life-changing because you don't know what you're going to get out there, but you're trusting God. How would you encourage those believers in terms of we are moving from one character, Noah, 
to Abraham and we are just seeing this uh, aspect of obedience to the voice of God and trusting God. How, how will you just um, uh, tell us in terms of trusting God, obedience, provision in this light of these particular characters that we are looking at? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, my sister. I just want to give a very small illustration. <clears throat> uh, when we were born, we are never scared of anything, and we don't fear anything, including darkness. <laughs> if your parent or your auntie or your uncle is another room and it's dark, you just walk. You don't fear. Because you know that they're there to do what? To protect you. Whenever you are leaving home, <clears throat> the child wants to go with you. They don't know where you are going, but they tell you, Mommy, I'm going with you. Or, Daddy, I'm going with you. Why? Because they trust that Mommy or Daddy or whoever they are going out with knows where they will take them. So, <clears throat> uh, it is not very easy for adults. Someone tells you, just stand up. Let's go. The first question, where? And, uh, <clears throat> no, let's go. Where, 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 where? And how? How do we just go like that? Okay, for now, we may not fully understand what Abraham went through. Right now, if you are told uh, leave Kenya to go to the U.S., it is so easy. Because we are used to leaving home, we, we rarely live at home. Yeah, so we are always on the move. It is easier. But Abraham's case was like now, being told to leave earth, to go and settle in mass. <laughs> you know, we have been hearing stories that they, there could be life in mass. Now you will start asking yourself several questions. Will there be, will there be food? Will there be oxygen? You know, how is that place? This is the situation that Abraham was. You are just told, leave and let's go. And <clears throat> interestingly, Abraham knowing who God is. He just trusted, just as a child trusts a parent. And he knew, wherever I'll go, the Lord will do what? Will provide. And that's what we call total trust in God. <clears throat> in fact, if I can use the words of the late uh, Pastor Matandiko, faith is believing that things are so before they are so, so that they can be so. So that is what Abraham believed. That if God, if God has said, it is God who has said, I'll just do what? I'll just go. It may not be easy, but if it is God who has said it, you do what? Yeah. <clears throat> In fact, if you look at Hebrews chapter um, 11, verses 10 to 13, it's talking about Abraham. And Sarah. Sarah also trusted. She was past the childbearing age. But it happened. Because of what? Faith. Many times we lose God's blessings because we lack faith and doubt God's word. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elder. And that's, that's really, really powerful in terms of having faith and not doubting God. And... Um, I would like to read from the text, Galatians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7. Just as Abraham believed in God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. From this particular text, we are getting to understand that because of Abraham's deeds, and as we are sons of Christ, believers uh, of the word of God, we, we are accounted for and we are tapping into those particular blessings. And it just is speaking to us in terms of because of this obedience that Abraham had, he was able to receive the promise of God and also get into a covenant um, with God. And um, 
for my sister and niece, I would just like to help us understand. Um, Abraham was able to make that life-changing decision. He was able to trust God in terms of, uh, Lord, wherever you're taking me, I know that we're going to get there. And um, whatever we're going to encounter, you're going to be our pro provider. And we see Abraham during this particular course when he has left home, his homeland, and he's gone with his father. And you're able to see the blessings of the Lord multiplying in his life in terms of even the hard uh, animals, the cattle, they were able just to increase and multiply the lands which uh, he was able to farm in, they were fertile. And what would you just um, encourage uh, believers in terms of when we trust in God, when we obey the voice of God, just as Abraham did, um, what's in line for us? What, what are we looking at? The word of God tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And this word is very true in the life of Noah and in the life of Abraham. In this life, we want to make a difference, we want to make impact, we want to be known, we want to have good things in this life. And the lesson just goes back to emphasize that. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. So if you put your treasure in the right place, then these things will follow. And when we look at the life of Abraham, me and you, how many people do you know who built a hack and survived a flood? How many people did, do you know who did not have children and God pr provided? How many people do you know that God consulted when they wanted to do something? So it follows that when you obey the voice of God, even the things that this world we seek, you will have them and have them in abundance. Because I, when I was looking at this story and I was looking at the life of Abraham, and at the time that God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and the Lord said that he would not do this thing without telling his friend Abraham. And I was like, wow. Why can't God make me his friend too? You know, even me, I want to be consulted. Because sometimes even you're praying and asking God, when, when, when? And you feel like he's not answering. But what about if you get to a level whereby, before he does what he wants to do, he consults with you? So the word of God is very true and it's powerful and it's alive and it does what it promises that you will do. Because when you seek first the kingdom, all these other things that we want, be it fame, knowledge, wisdom, be known, be powerful, they'll be added onto us because your treasure is at the right place. And we are told by the word of God that the things of this world, they are of the Lord because God is the creator. And so if you want to be associated with the high and the mighty so that you can be like one of them, then God is the person to go to. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so powerful. And uh, as we are moving on, um, I'm seeing that uh, just as Abraham obeyed the voice of God and uh, decided to leave, he not only left um, with his father, Torah, he also left um, with his nephew, Lot. And, and they went. And uh, when Lot chose to go with him on this particular journey, we are finding that uh, in the Bible, um, during this particular instance, uh, when they've gone out, and the Lord is able to bless them. Is able to bless Abraham, is able to bless Lot, and they're able to, to reach a point whereby they're very rich in cattle. And during those times when you have a lot of cattle, you have a lot of herd, you are considered to be very, very rich. I mean, um, that still happens, especially in the northeastern uh, part of the country. I mean, when you have a lot of cattle, that's, that's considered your wealth uh, status. And uh, it reached a point whereby they were very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And it, they had to arrive at a point where they, were, they had to disperse because there were some conflicts that were arising and the best possible way was they had to separate and uh, Abraham had uh, 
he was a very generous person, I must say, and uh, very considerate. Because from his point, he was able to ask his nephew lots. lots. Uh, at this point, we need to separate. But uh, I need you first to choose which particular <laughs> side will you be moving into with the herd and the cattle. And Lot was able to make a decision in terms of, okay, uh, Abraham, I will be going this, this side. And uh, I don't know what it looks for you, uh, Sister Mercy. Lot is here choosing the best side that, uh, Uncle, I'll be going this side. This side has greener pastures. This is the side I'm going to move into. And we're able to see just uh, uh, as it goes to that side. The other things are coming up in terms of uh, uh, the consequences of um, uh, moving on to this side. And I don't know uh, from your understanding of the text uh, what it looks to you when, it, uh, when we are saying um, uh, making that particular decision of um, this is the direction I'm going to take. And um, do we need to consult from God? when making uh, such kind of decisions. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Lot in, is an interesting character. And I would imagine, uh, and I think those of us who have relatives, elder, those of us who have lived with relatives, we know that sometimes um, they're good relatives and bad relatives. You know, they're, they're grateful relatives and some who are not, in the sense that you will have, uh, you will raise your brother's child, you will bring them to Nairobi to be with you. But, um, they reach a place of entitlement when they have got when things have gotten better and they are fine. They actually forget about you, and the day of your need, actually they don't even behave like you ever helped them. This is a very interesting. So when I see Abraham, I mean Lot, I see, I see a typical human, you know, a typical human who my also my uncle came with me, which I was very happy about. But now we have become rich, and he has become rich, and he has become rich because of his uncle. You know, the blessing, he's tapping into the blessing of his uncle, yet he does not consider that as, I don't know. So when the uncle actually comes to the table and says, you know, my son, because we are starting to fight and we shouldn't be fighting as family, why don't you choose? I mean, and I give you the first choice. A good son should have said, no, daddy, you choose first. But we see a selfish human being. Eh? We see a selfish human being because I'm sure he's looking at the flames and they were beautiful actually when they say you know when you look at history and you look at biblical history it says the, the fields of sodom were beautiful they were wealthy you know it was a beautiful place eh? so you're looking at this beauty and you're looking at these hills and you're thinking i <laughs> i'm not quite sure it's like being given a choice between karen and gong hills really humanly speaking we will go with with karen and, and, but, but you see, so he looks at life, he looks at comfort, he looks at beauty, as we all do, and he looks at what will be ease for him and his children. But little did he know, little did he know that this decision, this choice, would cost him dearly. It would cost him dearly. So sometimes you're saying, so as others were, were laying up their treasures in heaven, including his uncle, him, he was looking at how can you amass your wealth in this life. And we fall prey to this Irene in the sense that we also want good life. We want good life. Let's, let's be honest. We want the good life. We want the good schools for our children. We want, um, you know, the good things and the easy life for our families and our children. But at what cost, Elder? At what cost? Do these things cost us as a family? So this decision, as I look at it, I say, so the, the lesson is saying that sometimes in our quest for more stuff, we don't learn our lessons well. Lot moved right back to Sodom. But in his great mercy, God sent messengers to warn Lot and his family, letting them know of a pending destruction. You know? Mm -hmm. And so I look at that, Irene, and I'm thinking, wow, the choices we make, yet even in our choices, God is very merciful. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I really like that. And uh, what's coming out is the fact that a lot choose the, the good life, mm. the good things. And we're also seeing that um, there are consequences that arose from this uh, particular choice. And um, you, you would wonder, um, why will this uh, have consequences? wanting good things, wanting good life. And it's really now coming and touching on the text, um, where are we laying our treasures? 
are we laying it here on earth? Are we basing it uh, in heaven? And um, I'm also seeing um, sometimes in our quest for more stuff, we don't learn our lessons well. And uh, when Lot was able to just uh, take, uh, make this decision of, uh, Uncle, you will go this side. First, let me, yeah, yes, I will go first, I will choose, and I will choose uh, this particular side. And uh, it coming to hit him back um, at some point. And I would like to base uh, the question to Elder Manyara just to help us understand from the context of Lot and uh, the decision he was able to make. Uh, how, what, what does it encourage us, us as Christians in terms of when we are making um, some decisions and um, how careful do we need to be uh, on the kind of decisions that you are making uh, when it's in line with thinking of only short-term gains uh, in contrast to the, to the bigger picture. Thank you, my sister. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to making decisions, the chances of making bad decisions are very high than the chances of making what? good decisions. Why is it that the chances of making bad decisions are very high? Many are times when we are confronted with a situation, we depend on our wisdom. In fact, if you see when Abraham asked the Lord to choose, what did he do? Genesis chapter 13 verse 10. You know, it is very, it is very direct that and the Lord, Lord lifted up his eyes. He just lifted up. And what did he see? <laughs> the plain of Jordan. Then the first thing he saw, that is where he made the decision. <laughs> Most of the time, that is the situation we find ourselves in. You, had, you are confronted with that situation. You, you, you lift up your eyes. The first thing you see, that's what you make a decision on without giving it a thought. You see, Abraham had thought about this. He didn't say, Lord, go this way. Yeah, or this way. He told him, choose. <clears throat> and probably, probably as an elder, he could have expected that they have a discussion <laughs> with the nephew. <clears throat> but the nephew is quick. He's making a decision. He has forgotten, just like uh, my sister must was saying. Now, <clears throat> Abraham didn't depend on what he saw or what he felt. He had to wait upon the voice of God. And we find this in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after Lord had separated from him. Him he decided and left for Sodom. Now the Lord tells Abraham this. <clears throat> Lift up now thine eyes. He waited. And did the Lord told him to do what? Lift up. And look the place where thou art. And you know God takes his time. And you must also take your time listening to the voice of God. Because you may miss some blessings if you are quick. Yeah? To, 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 to make a decision after God has started talking. Look at what God is saying. Look from the place where thou art. Northward. And southward. And eastward. And westward. Now. If you look at the four corners of the world, if someone gives you all that, what does it mean? They have given you the whole world. Now, when we listen to the voice of God, we get the whole world. We don't simply see the plane of what? Sodom. Yeah? Where we are going to go and then end up losing what? And we are aware that when Lord went there, he lost his what? His, his, his wife. 
apart from losing the, the, the wife, when they were rescued, him and the daughters, yeah, as they were hiding, what happened? Incest. Children were born. Moab and Ammon, who were the enemies of what? Of Israel. So you can see the consequences of what? Of bad decisions. If we listen to the voice of God, and every time we are confronted with a situation, let's always put our knees on the ground and tell God, we are ready to listen to your voice. And God will speak. And that's why you see, even when uh, <clears throat> God wanted to visit Sodom, to see, to confirm the cry that had gone to him. He never talked to Lot. He talked to his friend who, as my sister <laughs> Renny said, he talked to Moses, to Abraham. And Abraham bleeded because he knew his nephew was where? And he was just. So, let's forget what is on earth making decisions on what we see, on what we feel, on the earthly wisdom, and depend upon the wisdom of God. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much, Elder. And uh, uh, that's touching on a very important aspect, the deceitfulness of richness and uh, what it can do to you as a believer and uh, the consequences that come there about. And uh, it's uh, wonderful because it's getting us into another context or another character that we are having uh, in the Bible and in this particular lesson. Uh, this particular character is um, is actually Jacob, and uh, just from the from the from the context, as a young man who loved and feared God, Jacob nevertheless stopped to conspire with his mother Rebecca to deceive his father and gain his blessings, and as a consequence, he started his adult life on a wrong path, having to flee or perhaps face an early death, uh, that is uh, on Jacob. I believe um, Jacob had a brother, Esau. And uh, from, the, from the understanding of the Bible, Jacob was a twin to Esau, but a second twin. So Esau was the firstborn, and he had all the full birthright to receive um, the blessings of the Lord. And, uh, but Jacob uh, felt like, I... Uh, let me let me go before my brother and conspired with the mother to actually receive uh, the father's uh, full blessings and this actually stirred up trouble because Esau was very angry and uh, he was tempered and Jacob we see had to flee from from his home and uh, Rebecca suggested um, Jacob just go back to my home uh, until things calm down then you, you can come back. But you can see that it really took a long time. It didn't take days. It actually took years. But we are being now introduced to actually a, a space where there's deceitfulness of riches. And I would like to um, uh, pose to my sister Renise when it comes to uh, uh, getting into conspiracy and um, other dealings, uh, that are not right in order to get rich um, what what does the Bible uh, say for us uh, even when we are seeing um, just coming from the the story and the lesson from Lot in terms of um, him being very selfish and uh, taking up a decision that we actually see consequences as Elder has highlighted in terms of losing his wealth in the long run losing his wife and coming out of Sodom in a situation whereby he doesn't have what he went there with, uh, what does it mean for us as believers when we are talking about deceitfulness when it comes to acquiring riches uh, and all the glory? Thank you, my sister Irene. As in the case of Lot, we see the English saying, all that glitters is not gold. But now when we come and meet Jacob, now we have three English sayings that I hear people say. One of them is, God helps those who help themselves. And, the, and also, another thing is that what goes around 
comes around. And another thing that I find out is that God's dreams for our life may be delayed, but they are not denied. And the question I ask myself as a Christian is, how low am I willing to go to achieve the things that I think I should be having? And this is what was happening to Jacob. He was promised that he will be the one who will inherit the blessings. But because him and his mother thought that God is taking too much time, God is slow, let us speed things up. Let us think, make things, they were the catalyst that we were taught in the class of chemistry. You are the catalyst to make the process move faster. And so that is what they were trying to help God. But we see that when they did this, we see the problems that came. Because Abraham, Jacob thought he would just go to the mother's place for a week, for three days, then Esau will, kill, will cool down. But it took 20 years. And still, even this loving mother that Jacob had, Jacob never saw the mother again. The mother died. So we see that in this process of trying to help God, we shouldn't do that. Like Elder Manjara had told us, we should wait to hear the voice of God, and it takes time. And we see that God is very merciful and God is so loving and kind. And despite what Jacob went, still when Jacob was running away, there was the ladder of Jacob. Still God came down. And we see also when now Jacob was going, well, there was that battle at the valley where the river of Jabbok. And we see that when Jacob was fighting and fighting and fighting, it got to a point in time where God had to lose him, to touch his socket and he couldn't fight anymore. And he held on to the Lord. And when he did that, he said, I will not leave unless you bless me. We might try to go the shortcut, but shortcuts are long cuts in the long run. So please, when you realize you've started on the wrong path, just cling on to God like Jacob and tell God, I will not leave you until you bless me. Yes. Sister Renice, and uh, from, uh, from that we are understanding that Jacob and Rebecca, they were actually trying to fasten, fasten things and take a shortcut or a short route uh, to receiving the blessings of God, of course, through the Father. And uh, we're able to just see that uh, during his stay at Laban's, there were uh, actually so many things happened because we understand it didn't take two days uh, for things to cool down back at home. It took years. And uh, during this particular time, I believe Jacob came to an understanding that, hey, these things, you don't take them this fast. When God's time comes, the Lord's time is perfect. And you are seeing Jacob going through a period of hu humiliation, repentance, and self-surrender. And we're understanding that even him starting from the wrong path, he was able to understand that at some point, no, this was not the right thing. Dear Lord, I surrender. Forgive me. And Sister Mercy, um, this this <laughs> this is going to um, sound. What what does it mean? Because we are seeing the Lord's mercy upon Jacob. The fact that he started uh, on a wrong path. The Lord didn't say, ah, you, I'm not going to help you any further. You decided to take your route. But we're seeing during this particular period of time, the Lord's mercy upon Jacob. And what does it mean for us Christians? Sometimes we start off and tread off on a wrong path. But does the Lord mercy spot us at some point? You know, because some of us would give up even on our own children, but God does not give up on us. And there's a saying that says we are judged by not by what we how we start, but how we finish. Because sometimes this race, eh, a lot a lot of people have started on the wrong foot. Eh? A lot of us began either by choices that we made, but God is so merciful that He actually gives us a chance. He's He's always open. You know, there was, there was something in the, in, the, in the lesson that really, um, uh, when we were talking about Lot, eh, and when uh, we were being told that when Abraham was, was pleading with God on behalf of Sodom, we are told, in harmony with his, char with his character of love, God never stopped granting mercy until Abraham stopped asking. How powerful is that as a statement? 
that God will never cease to grant us mercies until the point at which we stop asking. So the thing is, yes, bad decisions, and we, when we can see the deceiver, but he who remembered, you know, I think Jacob got to a place where he said, I cannot do this without you, Father. And he goes to the Lord and he's like, Father, please, in spite of myself, please remember me. And this God is a God who is able to remember us in spite of our choices, in spite of our mistakes, God is able to deliver us. But there's a quote I had uh, as I was listening to the lesson this week, that of course God hits, hits, uh, hits uh, Jacob at the socket, I mean, you know, at the hip. Eh? And um, I, I'm not sure, I, I'm trying to remember Pastor. There's a pastor who, 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 who does the lesson on 3ABN. And he was saying, it is better to limp your way to righteousness than to walk majestically into iniquity yeah so it is better for a limping christian who will make it to heaven than a majestic well-dressed human who will end up dead eh? so for me i pray that may the lord some of us may need to be hit at the hip to be reminded that we need to go back to the path and some i mean i hope we don't it is better to avoid the mistakes first but some of us will have to be hit and in in this in that journey it is better to limp into heaven than to walk into hell uh just from our sisters sharing we're able to we're able to understand that um uh when Jacob realized his mistake and was able to self-surrender back to God, he left home with nothing because he had flown. He had flown away from home. And when he came back, after surrendering to God, he came back as a wealthy man. And in the discussion, we are moving on to another special character. And his name is Moses. And uh, we are able to see... Moses was born at a very tough time, at a very tough time when the Hebrews were uh, under attack. And you find that for, for his mother, he was able to, she, she, she was able to actually um, get an idea that for my son, let me, let me hide him somewhere and uh, just to avoid this trouble. And in the process of hiding Moses, someone else was able to discover Moses in that process and this was the the, the princess and uh, moses was now able to be adopted to royalty and was able to live in the king's house and um in the process also the 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 princess was able to look for who am i exactly going to get to take care of this child and in the process she got the mother not knowing and the mother was able to come in and take care of Moses in the palace uh, where there is everything. I mean, this uh, boy Moses was able to be brought up in a way of uh, royalty, whereby he's experiencing everything. I, I believe when you live in a palace, everything is at your exposure. All the good things are at, at your exposure. And we are seeing Moses as he's now grown and... Um, of course, during this period of time, the mother is able to, to teach him how to pray, teach him about his people and get him to have that understanding of what it means to be a child of God and not just necessarily a child in the palace where everything is at your exposure. And at some point, uh, we're seeing Moses being in a situation whereby the Lord comes to him and Moses is able to, to, to understand that he needs to live Remember, you're being brought up in this, all this royalty. And it has reached a point where you're being told, no, this is not the plan that I have for you. But the plan is on this other side. And you have to leave all this in order to get into uh, um, and articulate the, the plan very well and actualize the plan of God. Um, just as we, we are coming to a close, I would love Elder Manyara just to uh, share some light in line of this particular character, Moses, and what it means for us as believers when, when the voice of God uh, is able to come to us and tell us, I need you to leave this, because this is not the plan that I have for you, but this other one is what is in store for you in order to reach out to my people, in order to deliver my people. How, how does it come to? Because it comes down to obedience, but what does it mean for us as Christians? Thank you very much. 
when we look at uh, this part of Thursday, Moses in Egypt, <clears throat> I, I am seeing uh, something very amazing. Some insights which I hadn't thought of. How could just Moses leave the glamour? Yeah? What I'm putting on, this is for church. <laughs> now you can imagine you are a prince. Sometimes even inspecting a guard of what? Honor. You have a fleet of vehicles. Yeah? And then leave all that. Imagine going to a place like uh, Korogocho. <laughs> to go and suffer with some suf suffering people there. Yeah? <clears throat> it will mean a very drastic life change. <clears throat> I want to draw <clears throat> a number of lessons from here about putting our treasures in heaven. Many of us don't know where we have come from. Moses was to die at infancy. God protects and gives wisdom to the mother that take her to the way, to the river. <clears throat> and he arranges for the rescue by a princess and he arranges for upbringing in the way of the Lord through the mother now how many of us as parents realize that the children do not belong to us the Bible says they are a heritage of the Lord from they belong to God they don't belong to us and we have been given them to us for a, a moment because you realize once a child starts going to school that child is no longer in your hands in a few days high school college the child is on his own <clears throat> what kind of life will that child have chalk bed knew she only had 12 what she did her job and ensure that the child knew who god is and what God had done for him, and what God wanted him to do. He never forgot that. Even when he was taken to the palace, yeah, <clears throat> this is what he did. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. <clears throat> Glamour is not always there. We have seen in this world. People become presidents. When their term ends, all that goes. Or you are elected into a position. <clears throat> and when your term ends, you are nowhere. Nobody remembers. But Moses understood this very well. And he chose the path of God. Laying up his treasure in heaven. <clears throat> Even when we know that Moses did not get into Canaan. You know, if I were Moses, I could have asked God, you are being unfair. After I have left all this, I have suffered with this view, and then you are denying me a chance. But <clears throat> Moses knew of something better. And he made that drastic change. And said, it is rather... To be poor with God than to be rich and famous without God. So it is important as we are looking at these characters that we realize that we must choose God first. Thank you. And um, I would just like to remind uh, all of us that as we live, we, we are sometimes tempted to go down towards health, wealth and leisure. Uh, but it takes strong faith to practice delayed gratification, just in the case of Moses, where he was able to, 
to leave the palace and all the royalties and the pleasures that it comes with and um, leave the pharaoh's uh, place. And uh, he knew uh, that the sinful pleasures that make men forget God were in the lordly courts. So he, t he looked beyond the gorgeous palace, beyond the monarch's crown, uh, to the high honors that will be bestowed on the saints of the Most High in a kingdom unattained by sin. And this particular um, uh, text is able to remind us that we should look beyond the, the worldly pleasures, the worldly uh, glamour and focus on what will be bestowed to us by the King of the Most High. And I would just like to ask... Um, Sister Masi, whether there are any comments, uh, any questions that are arising from, from the online viewers? Uh, there are quite a few lessons. Uh, there's Kevin Mwangi who is saying, what a powerful lesson today indeed. I would definitely love to have an em embrace the great faith of Abraham. And um, there's, there's, there's Bible truth. I don't know. He, he uses Bible truth revelation. We are called upon to imitate the life of God's men in the past, such as Abraham, Noah, among others, who sought God earnestly by faith, not looking at the earthly insults, opposition, or earthly riches. Yeah? So some of the comments that we have, we thank God, there are quite a few. Um, but yes, I think those are some of the key ones. That says, um, there's James Kamau who is saying, taking part in God's work through our offering is laying down our treasures in heaven. Obeying God and trusting on Him in terms of providence and direction. And um, uh, one of the takeaways we also have is in terms of uh, uh, even when we've started on, or on a wrong path or on the wrong uh, leg, uh, we're able just to go back, ask for mercy from the Lord, and He's able to deliver us from the mistake and show us mercy and grace in our lives so that we are able to tap in His blessings and, uh, of course, in His covenant that He has with us as children of God. Um, that has been our lesson discussion today, and I uh, really hope that... Um, it has been a blessing to you and uh, we are looking forward to just uh, moving on to the next lesson, next Sabbath, uh, which is unto the least of this. And uh, we, are, we are hoping that we'll keep it here uh, in terms of the discussion next Sabbath and uh, for today. Uh, because of time, I'll just like um, our sister Renice to just pray for us, close for us in terms of... Uh, just uh, the Holy Spirit uh, giving us the understanding that we need to listen to the voice of God, recognizing the voice of God and uh, staying on his path. Sister Renice. That we should wait upon you and also to listen to your marching orders which you are giving us to follow. Because when we follow you, we always end up where our treasure is and as we have learned this morning it's for us to inherit the eternal life so i'm praying that you may keep our eyes our minds and our thoughts on the bigger picture that we may know that walking in obedience is what you require of us forgive us wash us cleanse us from all unrighteousness and each and every day give us the strength and the power and to do what is right for the honor and glory of your holy name for this is our prayer in Jesus name our Lord and Savior Amen